You'll have 20 minutes with Jason. Jason, you there? I'm here, man. Yeah, I'm here he's there. He's it. making he's making it. coffee. He's off camera right now, but you'll see him. Too. <laughs> uh, go yeah, ahead, yeah, my yeah. friend. I'm off camera making coffee. Exactly. On my new iPhone, my fancy new iPhone. Go. <laughs> What's up? How do there you how do you do your coffee, man? I'm doing the French press thing these days. That's you know? like, that's I'm what doing, I like, do. My French press. That's exactly what it I do amazing. every morning. Oh my god! I mean, it's it's fast. It's hot as all can be, and it's got a great flavor to it. Exactly. You can make it as strong as you want. I love it. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> you've got. I'm two... making my second pot right now with you here. Second pot. Oh my god! You've got a serious caffeine buzz going on then. Come on, man. I don't play. It sounds like you had yours today, too. You're, you're, you're wide awake. You're lit. Oh, man. Well, I would say you're lit. Well, it's it's the size of the coffee cup, not the coffee pot. So, I mean, I, I sit here. I think there's probably this thing takes four cups. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, too. Mine is uh, mine is really about a two-cup size. So, you know, we got that. <laughs> so where do you find the time to do all the podcasting that you're doing? Because you're a very busy man. You're a guy that likes to dig into a story and get yourself truly involved. That's right. I mean, look, I, I make the time because, look, we all have 24 hours in a day, right? And at the end of the day, this is my calling in life. I mean, helping people who are wrongfully convicted, <clears throat> it's it's frustrating. It's maddening because it takes too long and often we, we don't succeed. But when we do, the feeling is like no other feeling in the world. I, I've had a very charmed life, very, very lucky person. I've had many of my dreams come true, but Nothing beats the feeling of being help, being able to help somebody who is otherwise doomed to spend the rest of their life in prison. And so um, I, I just that's just that's just it's, it's my thing. Mm -hmm. And it always will be. Unfortunately, we'll never run out of people to help because there are, there, there are countless people in prison uh, serving time for crimes they didn't commit. Yeah. Are there too many chiefs or too many lawyers? Is that why is what's killing the time? No, there are too many people in prison. Yeah. Um, I mean, what the what the problem is, is that, you know, our country's disastrous failed social policy of mass incarceration has ended up, you know, making the system unmanageable. Because when you churn 11 million people in and out of jail and prison in America every year, 11 million, imagine that. It's like there's no opportunity for people to get a fair shake because there there's no time in the day. There's not enough people. There's not enough resources, and there shouldn't be enough people or resources. We should just stop doing it the way we're doing it. No other country in the history of the world has ever done it this way, and we never used to do it this way. <laughs> when you think about it, 30, 40 years ago, we had about between two and 300,000 people in prison in America. Now we have 2 million, yeah. okay? And there's no benefit to public safety whatsoever. So, of course, when you just have this machine that just churns, there's no time to worry about any particular person's rights or their hopes and dreams or their family or their or their life they just they're just a thing to be processed mm -hmm. and that has to change of course i'm talking about the overwhelming majority of people who don't have the resources to fight these things yeah. right it's different if you if you can hire a great legal team you know then you have a fair shot i know here in carolina you know prisons it's a business it's it's a corporation it, and it's just it's just and it's like how do you break down these corporations well, I mean, the idea that we have for-profit prisons in America, and actually all of them are for-profit when you really look at it, right? I mean, there are private prisons, and people focus on that, and they should, but only about 6% of prisons in America are private, which is still 6% too many. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that even in the normal jails and prisons, there's a huge profit motive, and there's so many people making money from the phone companies that charge ridiculous rates for people who are incarcerated to call their loved ones to the people that are providing the food, or the, whatever services there are in there, there's count, count on the fact that there's a lot of people making a lot of money off of the people who are being jailed. And so it's really just another tax on the poor. And at the end of the day, we all pay the price for that. You know, in New York City, where I live, it costs $565,000 a year to keep one person in Rikers Island for the year. Wow. It would cost about $5,000 for an organization like Avenues for Justice to save the life of that kid and get them on the right track. So that's where I think conservatives and liberals agree, is that wasting that much money on a policy that's a total failure and does nothing but inflict unspeakable harm on individuals and their families and their communities that's not a policy that we should have in a country that's supposedly the land of the free. Yeah. I mean, so 
look, I'm hoping that people that listen to my podcast, Wrongful Conviction, will get a better understanding of how these things happen and why they happen and what they can do to prevent them from happening in the future. That's why I started it. And that's that. And that's what it's been doing. Well, the, th- the thing about wrongful convictions, what I love about it is that it's in the front seat of my car and it's also on my desk at work. And, and why I love that is because this isn't a talk radio show. Th- this is a real person who has a real concern for our society. And you do it in a conversational form that isn't that isn't belittling the listener. You're informing us. You're teaching us. You're showing us the way. Plus, you've, you've got activation inside your podcast. That's right. I mean, and thank you for those very kind words. Um, it is certainly something that I have a lot of experience at. And um, I've been doing this work for, I'm in my 29th year now, my 30th birthday in criminal justice reform next year. Um, but yeah, we, we, we try to tell the stories respectfully. The most important person in the story is always the person that I'm talking with, that I'm speaking with. Often those are people who are in prison or on death row. For instance, this just this week, yesterday, we released an episode with Billy Allen, who's in his 25th year on death row in the federal system yeah. for a crime he absolutely could not possibly have committed. There's no way, there's, no, there's a 0% chance that he committed this crime or was involved in the crime or planned the crime or, or yeah, I mean, it's like, but, and you listen to this and your head catches on fire and you go, what is going on here? It's like, why are we doing this to this man? And you hear him, he's such a beautiful soul. And, you know, he speaks so calmly and courageously, and yet there he is. Oops. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> so I got a call from, a, from an attorney I'm working with on a case. But anyway, so, yeah, the, um, the uh, you know, the, the idea that we have so many innocent people mm-hmm. in prison in this country is something that if, that, that should it should get all of our blood boiling. So why and, why did why did Billy feel though that he didn't need a lawyer? I mean, because you talk about that in this podcast. Um, I I don't you know he, he he I think a lot of it people that are innocent, um, they go in thinking, well, I'll just tell the truth, yeah, and then I can go home because most of us grow up believing that if we. You know, that, well, we go up believing that the authorities are there to serve and protect us and to help us and to, to do the right thing and to be fair. So we go in and we, we you know, we want to be helpful and we want to tell the truth, like we've been told. And then we end up, you know, too many people end up going in there. And, and basically, as soon as you open your mouth in that interrogation room, you're setting in, in motion a, a chain of events that may end up with you being wrongfully convicted very 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 possibly and so what one of the things i tell people on the show and i'm very happy to be able to be on your show now and talk to the good people of charlotte about this i always tell people if you ever get picked up and brought in for questioning the only words you should say say your name and i want to, um, um arrow whatever your name is say and i want a lawyer mm-hmm. and stop talking mm-hmm because you have the right to remain silent. But 85% of people waive their Miranda rights. Don't waive your Miranda rights. Do not do that. You want, you must have, a, it's, otherwise it's like performing surgery on yourself. You might as well go into hospital and just do your own heart transplant because <laughs> you have as much chance of surviving that way as you do surviving in that interrogation room. And even if they say, well, you, we think you're just a witness or you're just this, you're just that, and you, no. That's not, look, look what happened to Billy Allen. He's been on death row for 25 years because he believed and he trusted in the system, but it's really, it, it's not, I, I can't advise strongly enough not to do that. You go in and you say those words, your name, and I want a lawyer, and stop talking. Is Scott Peterson one of these people that uh, needs to be back out on the street? I mean, because they just took him off death row. You know, I'm not super familiar with Scott's case. There are so many other people dealing with it that I guess I felt like maybe that one doesn't need my attention as much right. as some of the people who are unknown but like mr billy allen but um but the fact is uh, people that i know that i respect are of the strong opinion that he is in fact innocent wow. so i i can't i can't speak to it from personal experience i haven't researched it but i do know like i said I, you know if, if i trust the people who i respect and their opinions um i think most of them would say that they 
feel pretty strongly that he's actually innocent, yeah. but, I, but I don't know. Yeah. Chester Holloman III. My God, a license plate involved in this story. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a horrible case. I actually don't have the details of that case right in front of me right now. But, um, but that's, a, that's a North uh, – Chester – oh, Chester – wait, remind me which case that is because now I'm spacing out. And I'm well, it's, it's, on the radio. it's with Tae Young Ho. And 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 so and uh, was 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 uh, robbed and and killed and the license plate is what led police to Chester. Yes. Um, oh, that's that's the one, that's a crazy case. I'm so glad you brought that up. He just happened to be a man who was in a car. It was a rental car, and there were three rental cars, same make and model, in that it, it, that were rented at that same time, and. The car that he was in it was a. Uh, it had three numbers that, that matched up with the other car. I think it was, or were very, very close. And he happened to be driving, and had nothing to do with the crime. Was coming from somewhere else and was driving towards the scene of the crime. There was one other person in the car with him, whereas the crime they knew was committed by four assailants, and nothing matched up. He was a guy who was working at a. I think he was working as a armored car driver. Uh, had no criminal background. There was no reason to suspect that he was involved, but it didn't matter at all. Once the system, once the system sort of lands on somebody, mm -hmm. the people involved, police, prosecutors, et cetera, develop this thing called tunnel vision, which is really a root cause of almost uh, so many, such a large percentage of wrongful convictions. And tunnel vision just means they go, well, we got this Chester guy. We're just going to find a way to convict him. And they stop looking for justice and just um, just laser focus on one guy. And then they try to bend the evidence to match the person instead of looking at it and going, oh, let's be objective here. This is not the guy that did it. Let's look for who actually did and get, this is a terrible crime, right? You Penn student murdered on the street. I mean, they should have, <laughs> you would hope that the people in the positions of authority would want to get the real perpetrator off the street to make us all safer. But yeah, that episode really, really is a powerful episode. It's an episode of wrongful conviction we just released this mm -hmm, month. Mm -hmm. And I hope I hope that your listeners will go just go on on iHeart, go to the iHeart app, which by the way, shout out to iHeart. Ever since we uh, switched our wrongful conviction podcast uh, network over to iHeart, the results have been fantastic. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just shout, shout it right out on iHeart about iHeart. <laughs> but yeah, go to the iHeart app or Spotify or Apple, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, check out the Wrongful Conviction podcast. I promise you, <laughs> DM me. If you don't like it, you can DM me <laughs> because I don't think, look, it's, it's a labor of love for me and it's a calling. And my goal with this podcast is to help people understand how these wrongful convictions happen, why they happen and how to prevent them from happening to you or someone you love or someone that you may be looking at in the defendant's box when you serve on a jury sometime in the future. Just knowing that today, somewhere in a courtroom in North Carolina or somewhere around this country, someone is sitting in that jury room and and thinking about the, the what they've just seen in a criminal trial where someone's life is at stake and recognizing some of these factors that we point out week after week on wrongful conviction, and they're able to make a more informed decision and lives maybe or, or almost inevitably are being saved. I mean, almost 40 million listens to our show by now. So it has to be true that somebody somewhere is having that experience, if not today, this week. And that makes me sleep great at night, knowing that I may have saved one life. Um, that's you know that's why we do it. Jason, I got to let you in on 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 my real world. Uh, I, I during the, the pandemic, I, I took an essential job at a grocery store, and for the first time in my life, I'm with real people. It's not radio sitting in a room thinking that listeners are there. I'm with real people. But the thing about it is, I'm seeing in the in the eyes of these real people. Just a couple of weeks ago, a gentleman comes in and steals a ton of stuff, and he goes, "I want to go back. I want to go back. Call the cops. Call the cops." Jason, I mean, uh, yeah, the, Jason, they're, they're they're not wanting to take their, their lives to the street they don't know what to do out here so do you have a second level of recovery in what you're doing yeah by the way that's a powerful story and um unfortunately it's a real thing i mean anyone who watched shawshank redemption one of my favorite movies can remember the morgan freeman character um and and how difficult it was for him or impossible for him to adjust to life on the outside and and you point out one of the really awful things 
about our system, which is that we don't provide adequate or even anything vaguely resembling adequate reentry services. Ironically, if you're innocent, as every one of the people on my show is, um, and we've now just released episode 303 with Billy Allen, an innocent man on death row in the federal system. But ironically, when people are innocent and they come out of the system, they don't get anything, right? So right. if you're guilty and you come home and you've served your time, at least in theory, you get a parole officer who's there to provide you with some guidance to how to, you know, get an apartment or try to, you know, do a resume or, you know, any of the basic things that, that people need when they come home, how to get your meds, blah, blah, blah. But even those people are overworked, underpaid, and, you know, sometimes not out for the best for the people that they're serving and many of them are just interested in putting them back in so but certainly many of them are not and i'm not going to uh, compete with that broad of a brush but the fact is we we should build ramps for people coming home from the system there's 11 million people cycling in and out of jails yeah. and prisons in america every year and they're going to be our neighbors when they come home we should be we should be fixing our, our prison system as the state of maine is, is doing a great job of doing that now and making it more humane providing people with education, providing people with opportunities to to improve their, their situation, whether they have go in with a with a any whatever their type of problems are, whether it's mental issues or substance issues or whatever it is. We should be providing job training. That's how you reduce crime. It's not police and prosecutors and prisons. The way you reduce crime is by reducing desperation. Desperation causes crime. People don't uh, no one's born wanting to be a criminal. No one grows up that way. Now, of course, there are people who suffer horrendous abuse as children, and those people grow up and they commit crimes because hurt people hurt people. But by and large, if you reduce desperation, you reduce crime. And, and study after study, experiment after experiment has proven this. Provide job training. People won't shoot anyone. They won't get shot. They won't rob people because they, they don't need to because they're able to go and, and make an honest, decent living. And... You know, people age out of crime as well. Anyway, we could talk about this all day, but I'm so glad you brought it up. Peeling back the layers. That takes a lot of homework. I mean, you, you I, I can't imagine what you're doing when you're not podcasting or you're not talking with people about your podcast because, I mean, you you, you really feel in, in your, your voice the compassion as well as the empathy for humans. Yeah, I mean, look, this is my thing. I feel very, you know, blessed um, that I, I never had to go through what these extraordinary men and women have gone through. Um, and then I'm able to be of service to them. Um, you know, I'm not a religious guy, but this is my calling. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, when I listen to the episode we just put out yesterday with Billy Allen, you hear this man who's been, who's calling out for help from, from death row, right? Where he's been for 25 years for a crime he absolutely didn't commit. And then I sit there and I go, okay, how can I help? And then, you know, I'm a person who's pretty resourceful. I'm a marketing person at heart. So I know how to connect, right? I know how to get, you know, to try to figure out the jigsaw puzzle that is a music industry. That's what I've done my whole life. So so the, the criminal legal system is sort of like a jigsaw puzzle as well. And if you can find the right people to contact and try to make them aware of these situations, which is exactly what I've been doing this morning, is trying to put Billy Allen's case in front of people who can make a difference. And, you know, look, it doesn't mean it's going to work, but I can guarantee you I'm going to put the effort in and I'm going to try to help as many people as I can. Because imagine being on the other side of that call. Imagine, you know, like imagine like whatever you're doing, all your listeners right now, they're driving to work or they're going to, uh, you know, what, whatever. They're going to hit some golf balls or whatever you're doing. Right. Maybe you're uh, maybe you're just home with your family uh, listening to radio and then try to picture a split screen and think about. And for some people, it's probably easy to do that because they have a loved one mm -hmm. who's in prison right now. But imagine on the other side of that screen is somebody in a five by nine foot cell on death row with nothing in there, but about 15 feet of living space that isn't that steel bed and that, you know, sink and one locker in there and a toilet all like right next to your bed and that nowhere to even like you could stretch your arms out and hit and, and touch both sides of the, of the walls. I mean, it's a, like a living tomb. And why, why wouldn't we want to go and reach in and try to help those people in any way we can? Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's what I do. It's what I'll always do. And at the end of the day, you know, it's great that I signed Katy Perry or Stone Temple Pilots or, you know, whoever, Greta Van Fleet, 
you know, or Lord, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is whether I'm able to make a difference in the lives of people who really need a champion. And, you know, if I can, I will. I wish I could do more. Um, and I'm going to continue trying to find, trying to work harder and smarter and, and try to help more people. And, and being on your show, certainly, if we can, you know, if we can get it, you know, somebody, somebody listening right now, like go, get on, you're listening to the sound of our voice. Go on the app, go on your iHeart app or Apple or Spotify and, and follow Rompel Conviction. And you'll hear ways that you can get involved. Yep. If, you, if that's something that interests you, you'll find things that we talk about. Kate, maybe there's one case you want to get involved. Maybe you want to write a letter to help somebody, sign a petition. There's a lot. Even you're sitting there, you're saying, well, I'm just a regular person, you know. Yeah, you you do have a voice and you do have the ability to get involved. And I and I beg everybody. A couple of things I want to say. I want to beg everybody. If you get a jury duty notice, serve on that jury. Listen to the show. Serve on the jury and be aware that what people are saying just because they're a prosecutor or a supposed expert or a cop, that doesn't mean that it's true. And just because somebody confessed to a crime doesn't mean they did it. Twenty nine percent of DNA exonerations have involved people who falsely confessed to crimes they didn't commit. Wow. because of the way our interrogation process works so yeah so so look you can save a life and the life you save maybe somebody you love but first you have to just just hear these stories and and get them up I'm, I'm you know there's a lot of ways you can help and vote vote in your da race vote in judges races vote i mean i know everyone's tired of hearing oh i want to tell me to vote 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 blah, 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 blah. You hear all the time right all these ads on tv but the local elections particularly DA races, vote for somebody who's progressive, who's fair, who's going because the life you save may be your own. Absolutely. Jason, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door's always going to be open for you, sir. Listen, I really appreciate the, uh, the the support and the exposure, and I love your city. And so shout out to all the good people of Charlotte. I hope to come visit you soon, maybe even come down and play some golf. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, man. You be brilliant today, okay? Thanks. Right back at you.